I lead PTC's Connected Operations Solutions Group. The only thing I'll say about PTC is we're a global software company headquartered right here in Boston with 6,000 employees that are super passionate about the number of exponential opportunities that are going to emerge as we all experience the convergence of the digital and physical world. I'm also very excited today about this topic, data-driven decision-making. I suspect there's no one in the room here who doesn't think that data-driven decision-making is a good thing. But where I get really excited about it is in the theme of this conference, the Singularity University Conference around exponential manufacturing. Because I think it's the opportunity to use data, real-time data, data that is connected from our products, from our machines, from our business functions in real time that will help us drive exponential improvement. So I love the theme of data-driven decision making. I love it particularly when it is married up with the idea of exponential and what opportunity that can afford. I'm going to kind of have two parts to my short discussion here today. First, what I'd like to do is share with you a little bit of the perspective that we have in working with many customers and, and partners around sort of the state of the Internet of Things in manufacturing. Now, there are many ways and many areas where IoT will transform your business, particularly if you're an industrial manufacturer or company here today. It's going to transform how you design products and engineer products. It's going to transform how you manufacture them. It's certainly going to transform how you service them. It will transform how your customers or you operate those products. And it will even transform how you sell those products. In my session, I'm going to dive down a little bit deep into specific, the specific impact it will have on how it will transform manufacturing. I'm going to first share a perspective about how we see the state of that market today. And then I want to take you on a little bit of a journey that we've developed, which is a simple way to think about how companies are adopting these kinds of technologies, and then come back and visit that journey in the context of a few customer examples. So let's talk about where the industry is today. There is a lot of research that has been done. Uh, McKinsey's uh, Global Institute, Gartner, et cetera, have all come out and said that if not the largest area, one of the largest areas where value will be created as a result of the Internet of Things is in the factory setting or in manufacturing. And we're seeing a lot of activity uh, in this space. A recent report from IDC said that this is, in fact, given their study, where most manufacturers today are directing their spending. But I can tell you I've been doing this now for, well, let's say three years. And in just the last 12 months, there has been a dramatic uptick in companies who are experimenting with this technology. You see a couple of statistics here. One that I should have put on here, by the way, is that of all the companies that have conducted IoT pilots, this was in the recent uh, Penton research study, that 80, those that had run a pilot, 83% said that the value of that pilot either met or far exceeded uh, their expectations. So there seems to be a, uh, let's say, a, a, an exponential development happening right now around companies beginning to understand what the industrial internet of things might do for their business and exploring uh, these kinds of technologies. Uh, as Jeff Tuff said yesterday from Deloitte, it's not just about technology by any means. You have to align your organization. You have to align your people and the resources to ultimately get these uh, value, get this value at scale. Um, I like to, though, take it down and say, OK, well, what are our companies really doing? And I'm probably not sharing anything here that you don't already know. But companies like GE, Airbus, and Denso, the industrial internet of things is a strategy that exists at the highest level of their companies, at their CEO level. And 
we'll hear from GE today, you know, you can't turn the TV on <laughs> without seeing how important this is to their business strategy. They have a broad strategy, and it's extremely powerful, but when you take it into the factory, they talk specifically about creating brilliant factories, and they talk about getting connected, getting insights, and getting optimized. Airbus says that they're going to, they're going to put digital technology everywhere in their factories in the coming years. And Denso, their CEO, has gone on public record saying that they're going to invest $100 million in connecting their 130 plants around the world in the next, uh, by 2020 was the date. So leading manufacturers, and I, I read the list of who all is here, including many of you in the room, I think understand that this will be a, a powerful force and it will be an exponential force in terms of creation of value. Let's look at what does the environment look like today? Probably most of you that are industrial manufacturers recognize this chart right away. It's the ISA 95 model that talks about the current stack of technologies that you find in virtually any factory. And the one thing about this stack of technologies is it creates a tremendous amount of data. We are not lacking for data in factories. We're lacking for the useful integration and leverage of that data in terms of driving business value. So those are some of the challenges that exist today, is there is a lot of data. It tends to be siloed, tucked away in, in different systems. It tends to be hard to get to. Um, it's not real time in the context of if I'm a user and I need a specific set of data that might come from a machine and three different business systems and, and some uh, new sensor that we've deployed in the factory, that that data can be easily brought uh, into visibility for me. And, and one of the challenges that has always and will always plague manufacturers is this idea of continuous innovation. I heard at one conference I went to, somebody said, the factory of the future is a dog and a man. The dog's job will be to make sure the man doesn't touch any equipment, or you can say a woman, by the way. And the woman or man's job will be to feed the dog. And that's all we'll have. Everything else will be completely automated. I think we're a ways away from that. And until that happens, the one thing that we can be certain of is that there will be an endless pursuit to drive continuous innovation in the factory. And that's hard to do if you're not operating on a, a digital platform. So what does IoT do to this? Well, a perspective uh, that we have is that IoT is a new layer of technology, a new stack of technology, or I should say a new technology that is entering the factory and living vertically along these horizontal layers that exist today. But it's bringing powerful new capabilities. It's enabling you to rapidly connect to these disparate systems, machines, business systems, sensors. It's allowing you to rapidly create applications that can bring real-time value to critical stakeholders in the factory. It's bringing in technologies that have kind of permeated the factory, but not in a big way, like mobile. It's making use of all that data that's created today, but really goes unused. And then it's bringing powerful new technologies like augmented reality, which, in my opinion, is the true convergence of the digital and physical worlds. And in so doing this, in connecting up and down these horizontal layers, what you end up with is a application set that delivers connected, real-time, role-based, and predictive capabilities. Okay, so as I mentioned, there are many different areas that IoT will show up and have an impact for manufacturing companies, engineering, service, sales and operations are some of the others. This is a perspective that we've developed through a lot of interactions with customers and partners around how you might think about this in a simplified journey context inside of manufacturing. And I'm going to first kind of walk through it, and then I'm going to come back and, and talk about some customer examples. So the first thing is we talk about understanding. And by understand, what we mean is unifying connectivity between 
machines, business system, sensors, and other data sources so that you have reliable, real-time information at your disposal. The second thing we talk about is real-time issue identification. Being able to instrument that data, that unified data, with either programmatic or systematic alerts. A programmatic alert would be if temperature on machine hits X, then take some action. A systematic alert would be if, anomaly, if an anomaly develops in one or multiple readings of data coming off of this machine or from a process, and it's outside of a 10% deviation of what's normal, then take some action. The real value here comes in now serving that information up to different roles that can benefit from real-time information so that they can execute actionable intelligence. What are some of those roles in the factory? Well, of course, it would be the production manager who wants to know how the line is running and how their KPIs are performing. It would be the maintenance team who cares about the assets that they're responsible for maintaining and wants to know if there's any deviations in the health uh, of those assets. It would be for the operator who needs to have just in time information specific to the task that they're doing coming from MES, ERP, machines, and other systems. It might be a quality engineer who's tracking whether or not the, the quality patterns are starting to trend in an area that would predict uh, problems or issues. So role-based intelligence. Then we move out to this advanced phase, and what we talk about there is if you have all this data brought together, now what you want to do is start to leverage that data. And you have heard and will hear more at this conference about analytics. We think in the factory there's really three character, uh, categories of analytics, predictive maintenance, predictive quality, and predictive performance. Augmented reality operations to empower the workforce. Here we're talking about delivering information to stakeholders in the factory in a way that can guide them through an exercise. And just to give you a quick demo of this, a, a sort of virtual demo here in the room, I want everybody to close your eyes for one second, open them and close them again. O open them, look around the room and close them again. What you'll find when you do that is the amount of information you were able to ingest visually, this is where we get the pictures worth a thousand words from, the amount of information you were able to ingest in that one second by just scanning the room, you could never write down, you could never read about, you could never document if you had a whole day uh, to do that. So the visual delivery of information in context to the task or role becomes an incredibly powerful way to elevate the efficiency, and by efficiency I mean both productivity and quality of the workforce. Digital processes, here we talk about connecting. Many companies call this the digital thread. So if you're a discrete manufacturer, you probably have invested at this point in, in 3D CAD systems to digitize your products. Unfortunately, and it, it almost makes me cry whenever I see it, many companies then take that rich 3D model and they turn it into a dumb PDF and they start delivering it to the factory floor. A digital thread in this context, digital processes, refers to allowing that design information to flow down to the manufacturing floor and how you design your manufacturing process plans, your quality uh, plans, how you uh, drive things like additive manufacturing or subtractive uh, manufacturing, and then maintaining an associativity so that if there are improvements to be made in manufacturing, they can be driven back upstream. And if there are changes made in products, they can quickly be propagated to manufacturing. You have to ultimately do this if you ever want to get to that idea of a perfect batch of one. You have to be able to, to capture the design information and rapidly flow that information to the manufacturing floor. Another outcome in this advanced stage is agile innovation. If we're talking about digital, which is what I'm talking about, then and, and Jeff talked about this yesterday when he kind of talked about the clock speed of, of companies, how they're migrating from, you know, sort of most of their activities being in, in the industrial space to more of it being around innovation. If you're dealing with data, the ability to innovate daily is really unlimited. 
And so you can start to think about how you drive value in a very different way in manufacturing. Okay. Then if we jump out to outperform, I like to think about this as really the enterprise uh, capabilities of IoT and manufacturing. Here we're talking about things like supplier visibility, synchronizing operations, which includes making sure that you have the right tools, the materials, the resource, the skills, the, the supply chain tied in so that as products are moving down the line, that you can be assured, again, either programmatically or systematically, the systems might be talking to each other. You might say, when this event is done, send the robot to go get something else from the warehouse and bring it over so that it's ready at the next line. That could all be automated. Uh, but to, to really uh, tie together all of the various functions that have to ensure continuous operations in the factory. Performance benchmarking, if your factory is connected and if you're able to serve up real-time data and standardize KPIs, then you can begin to monitor how a line or a factory or a cell is performing differently than another, and you can look at what are those opportunities to lift the poor performers into the high-performing uh, categories. And then ultimately, we talk about closed-loop digital thread. And this is the idea that if you start with design and you drive your design information down to manufacturing, and then you're constantly feeding that data back to engineering, you're converging on what is the sort of perfect engineering to manufacturing model. So what I'd like to do now is share a couple of quick examples. Uh, GE Transportation in Grove City started a project where they took uh, a number of their lines. This is their locomotive uh, manufacturing and refurbishment line. And they simply connected those machines. And what they found is that this very basic visibility enabled them to significantly reduce unplanned downtime. And by the way, as, as I listened to them talk about this at uh, the conference I was at, they said what their report showed <laughs> was actually quite different than what was actually happening in the factory. So getting real-time connectivity, being able to track very basic things like is the machine on or, or off, when we, is it off when we expect it to be on? And if it is off, why? Gave them incredible insight to drive down unplanned downtime. If I go to predictive analytics, I'll share a quick example here. An automotive tier one company. Um, probably we have some automotive manufacturers in the room here, but I've heard that when a uh, production line in automotive, a tier one automotive company goes down, that the first three minutes could cost you $70,000. By the time you pick up the phone to call somebody to tell them there's a problem, you've spent $70,000. In this particular example, using the data that was collected from the machines and the business systems, and then looking for correlations that resulted in alarms being thrown, they were able to significantly reduce unplanned downtime because 24 hours in advance of one of their furnaces that does heat treating, throwing an alarm, they were able to predict with 91.3% accuracy that that was going to happen. And then they were able to get the maintenance team there and the other folks there that would be required to be able to bring that line back up, as opposed to having it be a surprise and needing to, to sort of rally. So this is a case of uh, predictive uh, analytics. If I go to uh, AR-enabled operations, Caterpillar solar turbines is using this technology, so they're taking the design information that their engineers create, they're delivering that information to the shop floor in an augmented capability so that their operators know exactly what sequence to go about uh, performing when building one of these highly complex gas turbines. Digital processes, quick example here, CNB Yachts makes highly customized yachts. I probably will never own one, I'm quite certain of that. But uh, these yachts cost $2 million. They're custom engineered entirely, so the, the buyer is not only specking them out up front, but they're usually making a lot of changes as the production is happening. By creating that digital thread, that associative connection between engineering 
the engineering bill of material and the production bill of material, they were able to, for the first time in the company's history, deliver one of these yachts both on time and on budget. And that was just by now being able to manage the impact of change and quickly propagate that change in an effective manner. Agile innovation. This is interesting. One of a uh, customer in, in Japan or a company in Japan, Herotech, also a tier one automotive company. They, they sort of went through that first phase of Inform. They collected the data. They're bringing data in from their business systems and their machines. And then what they found is that they can very quickly, they can apply software practices to the factory. So there isn't a software company today in the world that doesn't do agile software development. And I would argue that if you're working with digital data in your manufacturing operations, you should also adopt agile development practices. And this is a, this is a sort of back to Jeff's conversation from yesterday. It'll be a big sort of cultural hurdle for, I think, industrial companies to overcome. But once you're dealing with a set of data, digital data, you can begin to operate in an agile fashion. And then just one more example in the interest of time here. I want to go to performance benchmarking. A top 50 global food and beverage company sees a 5 to 8% productivity improvement. In this case, they're able to monitor different lines that are producing largely the same uh, product. They're able to standardize KPIs across factories. So regardless of what the infrastructure is from factory to factory, they're able to normalize the KPIs. And by normalizing those KPIs, they can now begin to compare and contrast uh, performance. And with that, I want to have uh, one last slide here to wrap up on. I love this quote from Jeff Immelt. Uh, if you are a, went to bed as an industrial company, you're waking up as a data and analytics company. I think this is perfect for this conference because I do believe that data, digital, IoT, I kind of put those all in the same bucket, becomes the foundation for exponential in manufacturing. That said, I think there will be a lot of challenges uh, for companies who are not used to operating in a digital way to take full advantage of this. Thank you very much.